So again, thank you everybody for coming out tonight. Um, once again, for those of you who uh, don't know me, my name is Eric Potty. I'm the manager of programming with the Airdrie Public Library. Um, thank you for coming to our third uh, workshop for the Writer in Residence with Simon Rose. Um, before we get fully underway, I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the traditional territories of the people of the Treaty 7 region um, in the Métis Region 3 um, in Southern Alberta. This includes the Siksika, the Pekinese, the Ghani, the Sutina, and the Stony Nakoda First Nations, including Chickeny, Bears Paw, and Wesley First Nation. In acknowledging the traditional territories of the people of the Treaty 7 region, we are giving recognition to the fact that this is their traditional lands, and while a shared home now, our ancestors were in fact guests and not owners. Um, again, thank you all so much for coming. Simon is going to be leading a presentation, so I want to make sure I get every word of this correct because Simon wrote it down, and so it's important because today's presentation is Beyond Books, Developing Your Career as a, a Professional Writer. So I really don't want to get Simon's title wrong because that will go against writing professionally. Um, uh, yeah. But Simon, uh, for those of you who are unaware, I think he'll kind of do a bit more of a bio, but um, he's written countless uh, nonfiction books for children. He's also written, I believe it's 15. It's hard to keep track because you have so many coming out next year, but uh, novels as well. He's a very talented, very well versed author editor um i'm going to pass things over he can give a more uh distinct bio of himself but um i'll let him take it away thank you eric uh, and uh unfortunately for those of you who've, who've been here to previous ones i will be repeating some of the information i'm trying not to be too self-promotional here but i do need people to know exactly what i've been up to i suppose and, and what my credentials are i suppose uh, my name is simon rose and i am the author of 15 novels for middle grade and young adult um, readers with another three novels coming out next year and they are coming out next year the only thing holding them up is the author who can't get his act together to um uh, to to get them published but he will eventually um uh, very soon uh, so that will be 18 novels there's also eight um uh, guides for writers on a variety of topics there's one on uh there's two actually on writing for children and young adults there's one on writing historical fiction and time travel stories there's one on writing for social media there's things like that um I've also written about 120, I think, non-fiction books on a wide variety of topics, which I'll be touching on that topic this evening uh, in this uh, session. Um, I do, although uh, primarily write for uh, uh, books for the younger readers, but I do editing, consulting, coaching and everything for people in all genres and for all age groups. I'm currently teaching as a a creative writing instructor at the University of Calgary, and I've also done stuff with Mount Royal before and with the uh, uh, CBE uh, in the uh, continuing education uh, division. Um, and I've also done quite a bit of uh, corporate work, websites, and things like that, which I'll, and business writing, which I'll also be touching on this evening as well. Uh, as Eric was saying, the uh, the uh, uh, what we're trying to touch on tonight or cover tonight is uh, uh, ways to build your career as a professional writer. Now, in the previous session uh, or sessions, I should say, uh, we'd, uh, we'd examined um, uh, writing for publication and, and all that sort of stuff. And also last week was all about uh, writing for children and young adults. Uh, but uh, the first thing to point out tonight probably is that um, uh, not everybody wants to write novels. Uh, you might be very interested in writing, but you might not want to write novels. But you're told, of course, if you probably don't have an idea for a best-selling novel uh, or a set of short stories or something fiction, you're probably told, uh, told or people imply to you that you have no talent or you're not a real writer or something like that. But there are lots and lots of other options uh, uh, that you that you have if you want to pursue a career as a professional writer in some capacity, whether it's part time or or, or full time. Um, I did mention the uh, non fiction books that I have uh, uh, have written. Now these have mostly been for for children. They've been for uh, uh, kids, uh, and not really so much the younger ones, nine to twelve. I have done a few, I think, for 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 for, for the younger children, but most of them seem to have been for kids about ten to fourteen and, and teenagers and that sort of thing. And uh, there's been about 120 of these, I think, so far, which seems like a lot, but this has been since about 2010 or 2011, something like that. Uh, and I just did some last, uh, this, this summer just gone, actually, I did, I did a, 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 a switch of coming out next spring, I think they'll be coming out. 
And these have been for a variety of different nonfiction publishers. Um, and usually um, they, uh, they will have some idea of what uh, these nonfiction publishers, which you can research online and, fi and, and find out who they are. They often have lists of uh, topics that they are interested in people writing books about. Um, or they'll, or when they, when you're first in touch with them, they might be to see see that you're. You, there are certain areas where you have uh, expertise or you have interests and things like that. The ones I've been, I'm looking at them on my bookshelf here because they always send me the author copies for me to have, which is which is nice. These have been on a variety of topics on a lot of historical stuff. I've done a lot of books on things like. Uh, uh, Canada in World War One, Canada in World War II. Um, I've done books on science topics. I did a human body series. I've done stuff on politics. I did a, a, quite a lot of books on uh, indigenous uh, uh, peoples as well um, over the years. And um, and what these uh, books are, they're not like the um, not like when you're writing fiction, uh, you're writing novels and things, of course, your hope is that you're going to get lots and lots of money in royalties, your little percentage of, 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 the, of the amount that's paid for the book as your um, uh, reward for writing them. With the nonfiction books that I've been involved with, uh, it's uh, a sort of writing for hire project, really. It's almost like writing articles for magazines and newspapers and things like that. You're getting a fee for uh, writing the book. Now, but the, but, the, but the thing about the nonfiction books is um, they still have your name uh, on the cover. And, and if these books are, uh, uh, so you're listed as the author, even if you're not getting royalties for these things and you've already been paid a fee. So it's a great way really in some ways to build, you, uh, build up your portfolio and things. Cause even if these books are, if these books are, are on Amazon and things, your name is associated with them. So, uh, you know, I, there were 120, non-fiction books on Amazon and elsewhere online uh, that are associated with me, which helps me to be uh, very visible on the internet as a professional uh, author. So it's, uh, it's a great way to, to build your portfolio in that sense. Um, and as I say, you can research uh, the non-fiction uh, publishers online as well. Some of these you might be an expert on anyway. You might be an expert on some of these topics. Uh, I was quite fortunate that they, they the people have often wanted me to be a um, uh, writer about historical topics and, and famous buildings and things like that. I've not written many books about um, um, animals, for example. Sometimes these a lot of these publishers have uh, uh, books all about animals and how they live and this and where they live and that kind of thing. Um, and I've not done too many uh, uh, books on uh, famous buildings and things like that but I have, i've done one or two but uh, I, that's some of the other things and biographies too i haven't done many biographies of, of, of canadian or other um uh famous people from around the world but uh, um it might not just be something you're an expert on it might just be something you're interested in um now uh, i found that when i first uh, learned about uh, non-fiction books it was an event i'd hosted or organized called the, uh, uh, it was like a children's writers conference some time ago in Calgary. And um, uh, one of the nonfiction publishers was an exhibitor at the event. And I was very curious, well, who writes all these books? Do you have people on staff uh, or, or do you contract people out? And I didn't, it was something I was unfamiliar with at the time. And that's when I learned that uh, they contracted writers to uh, to uh, to to write the books for them. And on the and uh, in the little biography of uh, about the author, um, about the author, sometimes you'll see that uh, a lot of the uh, some of the people who were writing the books were retired teachers and things like that. So these were people who had uh, expertise in a certain area and everything. So they encouraged me to uh, to continue with that, and it went on from there. With uh, once I had experience with one publisher, I was able to to move on with them. Um, uh, different ones. Um, as well as that, in more recent years, because I've written so many of these books and had experience with it, I've been able to uh, uh, get some work as a professional. I suppose, yes, yeah, part I am a, a professional in the writing and publishing world, I suppose now. Um, sometimes people will be asking me to uh, edit and, and uh, fact check and do proofreading and things on other, other uh, authors' books that uh, on different topics. So that's been some, uh, some professional uh, paid work as well in that sort of area. Um, another place where you can, if you're not going to be um, uh, 
writing a best-selling novel or a set of short stories or something like that. Um, magazine writing, uh, magazine article writing used to be a, uh, uh, an area where you could uh, find work as a professional writer. That has changed a little bit, of course, with the uh, advent of the internet and things like that. Um, magazines uh, used to be of exclusively print uh, things, of course, uh, years ago. And then after that, there, were, there was an online version of the of, 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 um, of a print magazine there'd still probably be both versions um but now there was uh, for some time now actually there have been uh, magazines that have simply been online publications um and uh, these often also have uh, maybe a list of, of topics that they're interested in people writing articles about and uh, and that sort of stuff um so uh, but it's, it's much like much like the uh, non-fiction books in some ways somebody writes those articles they don't write themselves and so obviously there is work there for people to be professional writers if you're not if you haven't got an idea that's going to turn into a best-selling novel it doesn't mean you're not a writer or you can't pursue a career as a professional writer because that you, it, it might be more that you're more a newspaper or magazine article person um Recently, I've been actually writing some uh, uh, magazine articles on uh, current affairs, on uh, sort of uh, lifestyle and, and what uh, life is like during the um, uh, pandemic and what life might be like after the pandemic and things like that. That's been a quite a recent thing for me this fall, which is, uh, but again, it's another area uh, where you can do things as a professional, um, a professional writer. Now, um, just like I said about the nonfiction books, once you've uh, uh, become a bit more established, you don't have to be established and have 20 years of experience, perhaps, but you do need to have some experience as a writer. You might be asked to be um, uh, an editor or a consultant, fact checker and things like that on other um uh, for other people's books and other people's articles and things like that, and uh, and you can forge connections, of course, with other people uh, in the in the professional writing world. I think it was somebody who'd done a uh, some editing on some of my very first uh, uh, books. I, I asked uh, this particular editor to um, to edit my first writer's guide, the one about um, uh, writing for for children and things like that. And since then. Uh, Really, every now and again, she'll be sending uh, sending me referrals. She'll be referring me as a consultant editor type person to to other people, and sometimes these people will be uh, uh, providing me with editing and consulting and writing work even uh, as well. So there's uh, there's uh, that's another aspect of uh, of that. Now, as I'd mentioned uh, at the beginning here, just because you're not an, uh, if you're not particularly interested in being a novelist, there, is a, there are lots of ways to, to, to be a writer. And one of these as well is things like screenplays and scripts and plays and things like that. Now, this is a different type of writing, of course, to um, uh, novels. It's a different format. It's written in a, in a different format. It's one that I didn't know much about until, um, until uh, I'd, I'd written quite a few books, but I became interested in it and learned how to write screenplays and format them properly and everything. Um, and again, it, 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 this might be more of your uh, it might be more of your thing. You might think, well, I don't really want to write novels and stories and things, and or even nonfiction books. Well, there's this as well. There's things like um, uh, scripts and screenplay writing. But just as just like just as you don't have to get too hung up on the idea of uh, uh, of writing the best selling novel, you don't get too hung up as well on the idea of writing, you know, for some great big Hollywood blockbuster and things like that. Because if you're if you're if you have a bit of skill and interest in writing for the screen, whether it's the big screen or the small screen, uh, that might be uh, uh, it, there's, there's lots of quite a few uh, opportunities there. And uh, even if you're not getting um, uh, any any success perhaps with uh, with filmmakers and TV companies and things. I have been asked sometimes to uh, do editing and proofreading and things on other people's uh, scripts as well. I did I did a few of those last year. Um, and I say don't get too hung up on writing for the you know some big Hollywood blockbuster either, because as we uh, probably all know, there's uh, all sorts of um, uh, TV shows and TV series and things on places like Netflix and things, which we're all familiar with now. Um, and on places like Netflix and Amazon Prime, you'll sometimes be seeing uh, 
old TV shows where you can watch the entire series from start to finish and things. And there are Netflix originals and Amazon originals and everything. Um, but again, if this is a TV series with, um, if this is a TV series with, uh, even if it's, even if it's only one season with six episodes, uh, so some, again, somebody is writing those. And if you've got some experience in that area, uh, and if it's more your thing than writing books, it's yet another way you can, uh, build a, uh, your career as a professional writer and um not only that um there are other uh, things too which is uh, i'll be um uh moving into it i'll mention this a bit later on as well but if you've uh, if you've got more of a talent or an interest in in writing for the screen and scripts and things uh there's also the possibility of writing scripts for uh, youtube videos promotional youtube videos for uh different companies and things promotional more, more corporate work i suppose a lot of the time um but also sometimes people even even other authors and things might be asking you well i need to write a short and you're talking here about videos that might only be three minutes long, sometimes only a minute long, but they need a script of some sort. And um, quite often the person who's uh, who, uh, who's behind the product or whatever that's being sold, they're not a writer particularly, and they, and they need a writer to be able to do that. So that's, again, somewhere else uh, that you can explore um, as well with, with that. Um, uh, ghost writing uh, is, another, is another way of... Uh, in which people make uh, money as writers as well. Um, this is usually, as far as I can tell anyway, this is usually um, uh, similar to the nonfiction books in terms of it being a, uh, uh, a flat fee and things. Um, and again, it, 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 you may not be the sort of person who wants to write the best-selling novel and the short story collection and things, or even screenplays. And you might think, well, I just like writing and I enjoy the whole process of writing and everything. Um, as far, and again, this is not, I don't know everything about this at all by any means, but um, uh, when celebrities and uh, famous musicians and actors and politicians even, they if there's if there's a biography of them uh, that's produced after they've retired from politics or when they're older if they're an actor and things um some uh, there are those things are often or usually perhaps written by ghost writers um uh, and everything and your name does not appear on the front of the book you might be acknowledged i'm not sure if you get acknowledged inside the book um as as the writer of it but you are usually paid a, obviously a fee for that uh similar to um uh, what it is with the non-fiction books and it's yet another way to to be a um uh to earn money as a as a writer and it and again helps to build your uh, your portfolio with that uh as a ghost writer um now corporate work i had mentioned earlier uh, and this is again something uh, that it might not be for everyone and and, and people might be uh, you know, very focused on writing their wonderful uh, novel or book series or something like that. But again, with them, um, with I, I've done corporate work for probably longer than most of the other things. I've been, I've been doing that for longer than I've, I've done editing and consulting, I think. Um, but corporate type uh, writing, uh, we're looking here at um, uh, websites and uh, things like that, um, because um, companies do have websites and they do have text on them and somebody writes that and um quite often uh, they're not looking for they're not don't have someone within the company might who may write that and so uh, they're looking for people to write that uh, material usually things like the uh, well it can be the whole thing sometimes it can be the about us section the home page the um something about their products and services it can be the bi a bio of the ceo and the leading members of staff and all manner of things like that uh, but again they're looking for writers to um to do that and i've done quite a lot of that over the years to be honest um blogs as well uh blogs when but once blogs started to be more uh Blogs were separate to, to websites uh, some years ago, but they started becoming more embedded in with websites. Um, I don't know when it would have been, probably, but maybe 10 years ago now, perhaps. But uh, to, to be able to, to it, it was all about uh, um, search engine optimization and things like that and making sure that the website came up in searches and, and traffic on the internet. And if you had a, a fresh blog post every uh, three or four days, that helped with that. And so um, 
a, a, a blog post about some new product that the company had brought out or uh, about the, a new member of staff or, or something like that, uh, or something that was just related to their field of business if they were in home renovations or construction or something like that, transportation. Um, they'd be looking for blog posts like that. And I sometimes would work, would work for a, a company for quite a while doing those things. Sometimes it'd be a one-off. Um, and uh, after that, once once you've started doing things like that, you, you you sometimes will be hired to do things like social media posts as well, which also need to be written by someone. Um, sometimes they'll do them themselves, and sometimes they might want somebody else to do things for Facebook and and uh, for uh, Twitter, uh, especially. Um, and so again, I've done some of those over the years. Um, it's there's not as much of this as there used to be, but companies sometimes still have newsletters. Um, which uh, sometimes they're online, you know, more than you know, once a month or something. Sometimes it's only once a year. They do an end of the year Christmas newsletter or something. Again, they might need some uh, somebody to write those uh, press releases, um, articles that they might want to submit to online magazines. Again, they need writing. Uh, and there's also um, training materials uh and uh, uh company reports and things like that um might not seem as exciting as writing some uh, some uh, uh some uh book series about some young boy who goes to a school to learn to be a wizard or something like that but uh, it is all paid work as a writer and the more of it you do of course the more your portfolio expands and and, and things like that and that's uh, really was talking about writing for individual companies, I guess. But on occasion, I have also worked with uh, an agency or something like that, like a, like a, an advertising agency or somebody that has multiple clients. And then you're, they keep you on the books as their writer of choice, not for every company they deal with. But it might if you've done some work for um, in certain types of uh, uh, of uh, business and commerce uh, they it, it's not that you're an expert in that particularly but um, you've done that before and so you again your portfolio increases so people might think oh this person's written for real estate agents before they've written for doctors they've written for dentists they've written for electricians or whatever it may be uh, and so you're on the list i guess if something comes up and so that's another a way of of, uh, of getting stuff out there as well now, to, of course, get this work, or, or to, I suppose you also have to market yourself uh, online, which we, I suppose we all have to do these days. I, I'd learned that many years ago when, uh, uh, when I first started, uh, when my first book was about to be published, um, um, but way back when, uh, I, had to get, I had to have a website. I knew I would have to have a website. I had a blog at the time, too, which was on Blogger, I think, so it was separate. And then later uh, on the website, it was incorporated within the um, within the website but uh, it, uh, yes you had to have a website uh, even then I, I it wasn't just about my here I've written this book please buy it uh, on my website because even then being an author for uh, children and young adults um, I knew even before the first book came out that uh, um, children's authors were uh, often invited to schools and libraries to do talks to groups of children and to summer camps and things like that. So I had to have a website that had more than just a couple of pages about the books. It had to have all these different things uh, that I did uh, and uh, could be a professional with. And then it was a logical step from there for me to, um, to, to say, well, I also do this business writing side of things. So that, that was on my website from right from the beginning, I guess. Um, so you have a website, I have a blog that I uh, uh, post articles on, uh, not as frequently as I used to, because uh, we now have uh, this wonderful thing called social media, um, which is, uh, which is uh, for good and bad, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's there, it's out there, isn't it, social media. So I do a lot of, uh, you can promote yourself on social media, uh, which I do all the time, I guess, on Facebook primarily, but also on Twitter and um and things like LinkedIn as well, which I, I, I sometimes don't pay as much attention to LinkedIn as I perhaps should. But uh, if, if it's for professional writing, technical type writing, LinkedIn is, is more of a place that people, um, potential clients look for things on there rather than on, on places like Facebook, I suppose. But it's all important. Um, there are a lot of freelance writing sites. Uh, where you can uh, where work is advertised and things like that. Um, 
and there were, and there were various jobs. Sometimes the, the jobs are for things like editing uh, of books and things, but there's corporate work and things on there as well. There were sites, there were, there were places like uh, Indeed is another one, isn't it? I think I, 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 I subscribe to so many of these things that I, I, I lose track sometimes. Um, but I do get little alerts that some job is, has come up on one of these sites and you can choose to uh, apply for them or not. I'm on some sites related to ghostwriting as well, uh, where I get uh, alerts and updates and things. And, uh, you know, a lot of the time there isn't work that I can I am able to do and I am qualified for. But it's a good thing to uh, to be on there. Um, I even have ads on Kijiji of all places where I, if Kijiji had existed when I'd had that motorcycle I was mentioning before we started, I probably would have sold my first motorcycle on Kijiji. Um, it's a place that people go to to look for things. And I've had ads on Kijiji for quite some time for, again, the corporate writing, editing and, uh, and things like that. And some of the online writing courses that I still offer through my website, I've got about, I think, six Kijiji ads as well, which just keep getting renewed. It's just another way to be visible online, I guess. Um, there are, of course, local writers groups. I think that's been mentioned a few times in some of these other sessions. Um, um, I'm, I'm, I've been a member of uh, on and off of different writers groups over the years, uh, in person and online. Uh, I guess there were ones in, uh, there's an Airdrie writers group, I believe, um, that I'm a member of, in, at least on Facebook, at least, I, I, and I've done that. And um, there's things like the Writers Guild and the Alexandra Writers Center in Calgary. We talked, I think, at one point about the uh, When Words Collide um, writers conference in Calgary which happens every August uh, online recently because of the pandemic but uh, that's a that's an awful lot of uh, writers that uh, 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 attend that or around that is that's a big event um, and those things are good too because at those at those kind of with those writers groups you're going to meet all kinds of uh, 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 people uh, who write things um, that uh, aren't necessarily always going to be the same as, as what you write. Um, and uh, and it's, it's always good to meet other writers. And you don't necessarily need to or want to meet people who are just doing the same things as you. You get lots of ideas, uh, not always for for your books, but you, you get, I've, I've got an awful lot of ideas about promotion and marketing and things from people who write other things, people I would never probably consider writing. And that's been very useful for me. Um, now, uh, you may uh, occasionally at the beginning of your sort of career doing this kind of thing, um, you may need to do the odd thing that's uh, uh, for free and not charge for it very early on in your career, which is which is probably the same for a lot of professions. Um, just to build a portfolio and things like that but you do have to have some sort of writing samples to send out even early on so you've got to have those from somewhere uh, just telling people that well i'm quite a good writer i'd like to write your website unless it's somebody you know personally i suppose you would need to have some writing uh, samples so uh, it, it is possible that you might have to do a few bits and pieces for free very early on but not not, not for long um with the uh, I have some sam writing samples that I can send out now for uh, especially for the corporate writing uh, on, a, on, a, on a wide variety of, of different topics. I, like I said, I, I've done stuff for real estate companies and home builders, construction companies, renovation companies, um, some very, very technical stuff sometimes on the. Uh, uh, on, on, on IT and on um, I've written for dentists and doctors and all, all manner of things over the years and these are great samples to send out if somebody says oh, do you have any samples of your previous work and they're a real estate company well voila I have something I can send them and then they can look at that and make a decision as to whether they want to hire me for their um, for their work and things like that and this has been for some then this these samples have been for things like websites and blogs and for newsletters and things but even book reviews you might have sometimes done book reviews for somebody else and that's again is an example of your writing and it shows what you've been able to do um so uh yes i, I think that is as well we, we we will have some time for questions but that's uh, that's from from my experience i suppose some of the some of the ideas not everything of course um about ways to build a career in as a professional writer from my uh, from what i've known over the years um as i always say at the end of these 
little sessions here. Um, you're very welcome to uh, connect with me through the uh, writer in residence program at the library. Uh, there's still space, I think, Eric will confirm perhaps there's still space for these um, uh, blue pencil sessions. We're running out of time a little bit, but there is time to do these blue pencil sessions that people can send in a um, some writing that they want me to look at and then schedule a Zoom meeting or phone meeting about that. Um, you're very welcome to connect with me on social media or contact me directly through my website either during this term as the uh, as the library's uh, um, um, writer in residence or afterwards uh, and uh, and uh, yeah we'll take it from there